Boy, she really loves sticking it to you. Yeah, I noticed it. If I don't start your handling better, it's only gonna get worse. She still wants you, can't you see that? Well, as long as my father doesn't see it. Jay, look, she's a beautiful woman. And maybe that's some of the problem here. Maybe you're still turned on to her. Sometimes I look at her and I wonder, was she always this devious? Was I so naive back then that I couldn't see through her manipulations? As being married to my father hardened her. Look, Jer, you've changed a lot in the last couple of years. We all have. But your relationship with Natalie, my, that must have been incredible for you two to still affect each other the way you do. Natalie was the first woman I really loved. And you're right, it was pretty powerful stuff. When it ended, I... I thought I'd never get over it. I was so obsessed with her that I chose to ignore my better instincts. I know back then she was shallow and bitter, but... I don't know. Somehow, she must have disguised it better. Erica, on the other hand, is a different story. She'd be good for you. We both know that. I'd met her years ago, perhaps. Not now, Larry. There's no future for the two of us. Last place I thought she showed up tonight. I don't know why I feel sorry for you, but I do. Don't. You brought this whole thing on yourself. Encouraged her to go out with him. your drink and let's get out of here. Right. Put this on my bill. Thanks a lot. I'd like to get to know him better. And this afternoon, he seemed to be almost baiting, deliberately baiting his son when I told him that we were going to have dinner. What do you mean? Well, I got a sense that uh, I was encroaching on Jeremy's turf. You mean because you were taking me out to dinner? Well, um, no, I, I'm sure you're wrong, Ned, really. Jeremy and I are just friends. I mean, sometimes he's overprotective of me, that's true, but I believe that's just because he was such close friends with my former fiancé. Oh, I hadn't realized that. Yes. Yes, when Mike died, Jeremy was a great comfort to me, and, um, I'm sure that's all you saw. Really, no. <sighs> Jeremy, you love her. When are you gonna have the guts to do something about it? Oh, great, great. Just sit there like you don't hear me. But I know you, man. I know you were hurting when you saw her walk in with that guy tonight. That's enough, Larry. I'm gonna give you one more piece of advice, then I'm out of here. When she comes through that door tonight, you be sitting here waiting for her. You let her know how you feel. Tell her you can't bear the thought of her in another man's arms. I can't do that. Okay. 
Then take her upstairs to bed. That's what you both want. Come on, it's all this self-denial that's driving you crazy. Larry, I know you mean well. What, what, you gonna tell me you don't want her? There is no one in this room that believes that, okay? Hey, I'll see you tomorrow. Jeremy, how long have you been here? When did you get home? You should go. But I also think that we should stop going places all the time together so people would think we're a couple. So people won't think we're a couple? I mean, you're living with me in my house. Anyway, there's no one I would rather be with. Erica, just because I took a vow of celibacy, there's no reason for you to be denied. Well, I mean, it's not as if I just fall into bed with someone at the drop of a hat. Of course not. You have to be in love. But that's why I think you should keep yourself open to that possibility. Like to hear some music? Pardon me? Music. Oh, yes. That would be very nice. Oh, that's very pretty. Oh, that's very pretty. I'm sorry. I haven't been very good company tonight. You've been delightful. Maybe a bit quiet. Well, you're very kind. You see, I've just, I've just been under a lot of pressure at work. Erica, you don't have to explain to me about pressure. I'm a doctor, remember? I know all about pressure. You know, I've had a very interesting night. And I hope that you'll have dinner with me again. You're very kind to ask. Erica, I think you're lovely. And I've had an enjoyable night. And I hope... The next time we're together, I can make you forget about your troubles. You know, I, I can be funny. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> I know, I'm sure you can. Well, the trouble is, I'm not. And I don't want to ruin your sunny disposition. Well, you let me worry about that. All right. I would like to see you again. Did you and Larry have a nice dinner? It was all right. Well, Alex and I took your advice and stayed in. Are you staring at me? Sorry if this bothers you. Although it really shouldn't. You have seen me in less. Have you forgotten? Oh, Natalie. Don't you know I can see through you? The gown isn't all that transparent. Yes, yes, yes. You're shameless. You'd actually leave my father's bed to come down here to play your sick games with me? Really, Jeremy? These accusations of yours are getting very tedious. If I wanted you, you'd be in my bed in two minutes. Don't flatter yourself, Jeremy. I don't know why it's taken me so long to realize this, but I have finally understood why it is that you're so hostile to me for all these months. See, you're the one who wants me. You want me so much, you project all your feelings and desires onto me. You're deluding yourself. I can bear the sight of you. You go right ahead and deny it if it makes you feel better. I can see it in your eyes. It's still there. All the passion and desire you ever had for me.
Oh, please don't stop. It was so lovely. Yes, go on. I was enjoying it. Um, no, that's all right, Father. I'll, I'll play it later. You mentioned you wanted to speak to Monique anyway alone, so I'll give you some privacy. Excuse me. Speak to me? About what? Daisy, you, you've got to remember that emotionally Nina's... Well, she's still an adolescent, and you know how sensitive adolescents are about their independence. PC, just tell me. She wants you to stop trying to be so close to her. I don't. Then it shouldn't bother you to see me looking like this. Animals have more pride. Poor Jeremy. I never would have married your father if I'd known what it would do to you. You flatter yourself. You tried to kill what you felt for me by going off and becoming a mercenary. Aren't you forgetting the facts, Natalie? You know why I left. Thank you so much, Ned. Really, I, I had a lovely evening. I did, too. I want to see you again, Erica, soon. Say, uh, for lunch tomorrow, or uh, dinner, and breakfast. Well, my goodness, your poor patients are going to um, try to sue you. <laughs> well, I suppose I could settle for dinner. All right, then call me. Good night. <laughs> Close to her? You mustn't worry. I'm sure a bond will develop. There already is a bond. She's my daughter. Well, that's just it, you see. She f she feels that you're using her as a substitute for the daughter that you told her that you that you lost. It isn't that she doesn't want eventually to have a relationship with you. It's just that the timing of the whole thing, she feels that she's being used. <laughs> it was all my idea. That stupid idea that I told her that I lost my daughter. It's so funny. Forever, you don't know that, do you? I can't take any more of this. I walk in the room and I look at her. She looks back at me with that very cold, polite expression. Sort of like I was a stranger whose name she was trying to remember. I think you're exaggerating a little bit. No, right? I'm not. And you know I'm not. It's bad enough she doesn't love me. Now she doesn't even want to try to get to know me. There's nothing more to talk about. I remember why you left. That's one of the many precious secrets we share. that Alex refuses to go to sleep until I come to bed, so I humor him, and then later on I take a little walk. I I'm see. still feeling restless. How was your evening? Very nice. Well, Dr. Hamill certainly is an attractive man. He's awfully attentive to his patients. Now, don't tell Alex, but <laughs> if I were single. You're very lucky. It's not often you find an unattached man who's warm and attractive <laughs> and highly successful. <laughs> My goodness, Natalie, you're worse than my mother. I hardly know the man. Well, I'm sure that after this evening, he'll make every effort to remedy that. We'll see. Is Jeremy home? Oh, he was here, poor dear. I really feel for him. Why? Oh, you know how he is when he gets in one of his moods. And he went off to have dinner with Larry, and apparently something disagreed with him because he left the chateau without even the, eating dinner. The chateau? Jeremy was at the chateau? Well, yes. Of course, I offered to make him some dinner, but no, he preferred to sulk. Well, excuse me, Neville. He's probably asleep. 